Since you clicked on this video, you really must be looking for a way to add curves to your website. Curves that make your website beautiful to look at all day and all night. Well, in this video, I'll show you two ways to create curves. The first is going to be the more complex way by using pure CSS. And the second way will be the easier and more recommended approach which is by using SVGs. So let's get started with approach 1, the pure CSS way. Create two files, index.html and style.css. In the index.html, click exclamation point followed by tab to generate the boilerplate. Now add a link tag to link the CSS to your HTML. Within the body tag, add a section with a class of pink and within that add a header and some content. Go to the style.css file now and adjust the font size of the header and content. And let's also make the background of the page black. Now let's give the text a nice font. For that I'll paste these google font links in the head tag of the HTML file and apply its subsequent font family in the body tag. This will ensure all text follow this font. Next, I'll center these texts. Then apply a height to the entire section and then give it some padding. Then I'll apply a pink background color to the class of pink. Now let's add the curve. To do that, first add an empty div with a class of curve within the section. Now this div should be at the bottom of the section div because we want the curve at the bottom. For that, the curve needs to be absolutely positioned with respect to or relative to the parent div, which is section in this case. So add position relative to section and apply position absolute to the curve div. Let's also set a height and width to it and place it at the bottom. Upon inspect, you can see the div is placed at the bottom with a proper height. Let's make this into a curve now. To do that, we need to target its before and after pseudo elements. If you didn't know, the before and after pseudo elements in CSS allows you to insert content onto a page without it needing to be in the HTML. While the end result in the UI is not actually in the DOM, it appears on the page as if it is. For example, to create this curve, I could add two divs with the class curve, one of which would represent the left side of the curve and the other the right side. But instead of adding two divs, I could simply use one div and utilize the before and after pseudo elements to add both sides of the curve without having to add any extra HTML. So in the before pseudo selector, the content of the element will be an empty string then it will have a position of absolute. Then it will have a border radius with two values. If it was just one value, it would create a perfect circle. But when you add a second value, it creates an ellipse. Where the first argument represents the vertical radius and the second the horizontal radius. Then after that, we will set its width and height. Now apply the exact same styles to the after elements as well that will give us two circles to work with. And now the difficult part is getting them to align properly to look like a curve. The before pseudo selector will be a dark circle and the after element is the pink circle. The real the tricky part is putting the circles in the proper location which will likely take a lot of trial and error. Then use the transform property along with translate which basically moves the circle to a different location respectively. The translate takes two arguments which are the x and y axis respectively. Now as you can see, we just made a curve using pure CSS. However, the curve doesn't look entirely perfect and would require a lot of trial and error by changing the different values to make both the curves align with each other. And that is why making S-shaped curves or waves such as these using pure CSS can be a daunting task. Also one thing to notice is there's this horizontal scroll bar causing the content to overflow. For that, I'll add overflow x as hidden to the body. So instead of creating complex curves in CSS, you can use pure CSS to construct simple curves such as circles or a single ellipse. Before I do that, first I'll add another section. This is just to create some extra spacing. Now, create two more sections. Keep the first one empty with a class of circle and put content in the other one with a class of circle content. Now we can easily add a curve here by only targeting the after pseudo element and giving it an elliptical border radius on the top left and top right, followed by absolute positioning to put it in the appropriate location. As you can see, this example is very similar to the last one but far more simple. I would definitely recommend using CSS to create simple curves like this. Now moving on to the second approach of creating curves but this time using SVGs. This method will allow us to create complex SVGs very easily without having to write CSS from scratch and adjusting its values through trial and error. First, I'll add some space again adding a section. Then I'll create another section with a class of blue, add the contents within it as before. And this time, instead of adding an empty div, I will add an SVG here. To do that, you can generate many custom SVGs through numerous websites and the best part is these websites share the HTML and CSS of the generated code out of the box as well. For example, go to shapedivider.app. 
you can select multiple shapes from this drop down. It gives a wide variety of options. I'll select waves and pick the same background color as the section above to make everything seem uniform. After that, copy generate the code for this curve. Copy the HTML and place it within the section where we generally used to place the empty div in the previous examples. And I'll also copy the CSS and paste it in the CSS file. Now, if I go to our local app, you can see we have this beautiful looking curve that's been added to our page. This SVG version looks so much better and smooth than the pure CSS one which we created. So using SVGs for curves is a recommended approach. It gives you a lot of control and allows you to create a variety of curves in less time. So that's all for this video, I hope you found it insightful, if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe.